So uh, Lenny and Belisi here talking about the final three, no, there are more things even. Mm -hmm. No, the final three things in this lesson, right? About passive voice. Um, and and we, we have one video about passive infinitives, another about things that you can do with a definite article, and the last one is about the articular infinitive. So passive infinitives, the, uh, the ending uh, for passive infinitives, as you see in the present passive infinitive, is psi, that is sigma, theta, alpha, iota. So the way to form a regular present passive infinitive is the thematic vowel for infinitives is always epsilon. That's because it's they're opposed to participles, which you don't know yet, which have an omicron, okay? But anyhow, it uses the, the E thematic vowel, and then you have psi. So, and the present infinitive has recessive accent, so it's lewis thi. Um, Notice that the perfect passive infinitive has the same ending, psi, and you just tack it on without a thematic vowel because the perfect passive, as we've said, is not a thematic verb form. Right? So it's lelu psi, again with recessive accent. The other two infinitives, and the book doesn't teach you the last one, the future infinitives. that taught you any future infinitives, but we're giving you one today for the heck of it. So the aorist passive infinitive, remember we said the aorist passive has active endings. So you get the stem lu, the theta eta, which is the part of the thing that makes the verb passive, and that you see from the last principal part, eleuthane. And then you add the ni ending, which you've seen before in perfect active infinitives, like lelu kenai, and so forth. Okay? Um, so the Future passive infinitive, by contrast, has the passive ending, lu, the, the se, for futureness, okay, and the e thematic vowel, and the ending sti. This, this particular verb has the theta as well as the eta, okay? We also want to show you a verb that doesn't have the theta, and there's a new verb in this lesson, the verb blapto, which means to harm. It actually has two aorist passives. It has the older one, which has no theta, and the newer one, which does. So these are forms from the uh, um, that that reflect the older level layer because we want to show you forms without the theta before the eta. So the the present passive infinitive is just like Lewis thy blop. That's the stem blop to. It means to harm, by the way. The epsilon is the thematic vowel for the infinitive, and the ending is sthi. In the in the perfect, okay. Notice what happens here. This is a stem. Aside from uh, the other aspect of it, that its aorist passive doesn't have a theta. In the it's a it's a stem that ends with a, a consonant. The actual stem ends with a beta. We know this because there's a, um, a noun blabe that means harm, and you can see it in the last principal part of this verb. We should write that down, by the way. Eblabane is the sixth principal part without the theta. That's an aorist passive without a theta. Okay? That means I was harmed. Okay? Exactly. So um, so the, the underlying form for the perfect infinitive is be blub. Okay? But when you combine the sti ending without the thematic vowel, to beblab, you get not sni, beblaf sni, which Greeks couldn't say, but beblaf thai, that is another one of these cases, like the second person plural passive endings in the perfect uh, middle and the perfect passive and the pluperfect passive, where the s disappears from the ending. So it's thai, again, that's the way we pronounce it. Probably something else was going on there, but that's the place where you lose the sigma in the in the uh, beginning of the of the ending, which is significant, but something you have to watch out for. Okay, and then the aorist passive is blub, a ni. You got the eta as the sign of passiveness, not the theta eta. And in the future, blub a again, no theta. Se the sign of the future, and the sli ending because the aorist passive is active. Um, the future passive is passive. Okay, and it has the sli ending. And that's the that's the way you form these infinitives, these verbs. So these things mean to be harmed, um, to, to how we are to translate 
the the aorist passive. It can't, it's, it's awkward to say to be being harmed, okay, mm -hmm. although we say that that would be a precise and maybe an overly precise uh, translation of the present infinitive. The aorist be, should just be to be harmed, and the perfect would be to have been harmed, and the future will be to be about to be harmed. Right? You can see why the book hasn't taught you these things because it doesn't know, can't really show you what to do with them. All right.